to Riverside Church. It's so lovely to see you this morning. I feel like there's a slight touch of spring in the air, isn't there? Um, which is just lovely to see a bit of sunshine. Welcome. Uh, whether you're joining us in the room today or if you're joining us online at home, it's really lovely to have you join us today. My name's Sarah, this is Nathaniel, and we're going to be leading you through the service today. Fantastic to be here with you all. You will have received a little palm cross made from palm leaves. Uh, and that's not just random. That is because today is Palm Sunday. So later on when we're worshiping, when we're singing together, feel free to hold on to this to remember what Jesus did. But the reason why they're made out of palm leaves on Palm Sunday, the reason why we think about this is because at the start of the week in the lead up to Easter, Jesus entered the city and everyone was waving palm leaves, shouting, Hosanna shouting save us and they were worshiping on on the way in and stuff so that's something that we think about as we think about the story in the lead up to easter because easter is only a week away that's come around quick it has been very quick this time it has been quick it's a short term this was wasn't it um so judy's going to be speaking to us a bit later and she's going to be speaking on the topic of injustice and how that plays a role in the story of Easter. So we look forward to hearing from her. And we're also gonna be thinking about areas of injustice that we're passionate about. Um, so maybe just have that in your minds as well. Just be thinking about that. If there's areas in the world that you see where injustice happens. One of the things we also wanted to look at and, and, and reflect on was the kids weekend away from last weekend. Sarah, you were leading that. Do you want to just share a little bit about how that went? Yeah, for sure. And I think I've got some helpers. Now is your moment, guys, if you want to come up and join me. Um, and I think we're going to see a few photographs as well. We had a brilliant, brilliant time. So we took 35 children away to the Pioneer Centre um, in Kidderminster, where we've been lots of times. And it's lovely because we know it really well and they know us. Come on, guys, come join me. Um, so we had a really great time. Children were um, from Riverside and also not from Riverside, so kids that don't go to church at all. Um, and a couple of friends who came along. We had three kids who were like friends of Riversiders, and it was just lovely to be able to welcome them along as well. Um, but I was wondering, you guys, if you could maybe let us know what were your highlights, what were your best bits of the weekend, would that be all right? So my highlight was probably the activity on Sunday, which was the Blitz. And basically, it was an aerial trick, which was actually kind of scary. And then there was abseiling, and then there was zip line. but I fell over returning the zip line, so I got a bit funny. <laughs> My favorite activity was also the aerial trek because it really um, challenged my confidence and stuff. And I loved like all the different acting sessions when we about the Bible and like stuff like that. Probably my favorite was the zip line because I faced my fear. I really didn't want to do it, but um, I did it in the end and I was really pleased with myself. So that's probably my highlight. Um, it was just such a fun weekend, and I think, trying to think of highlights, there were so many, but I think for me, that Sarah and the team has made such an inclusive, welcoming place that so many new people have come through, being invited by friends, or through Matilda, or um, through React, and just seeing new people come and, and get to know them was great. Thank you so much, guys. Let's give them a clap. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so, so thank you for your prayers. I know you were praying for us for a brilliant time. And Sarah, maybe there are some people here who are thinking, well, that sounds amazing. We've heard a lot about the youth weekends as well and the kids weekend today. What is, some, what is something that we can do to prepare for next year? Or if we're thinking, how can I get involved next year? What? Tell me more information. Brilliant. So if you're thinking, oh, this looks great, how can we be involved? Um, if your children are currently in year two up to year five um, this year, then next year they'll be invited to come along on the weekend away. If they want to bring friends, that's brilliant. Um, so yeah, next year, you, year twos will get a chance to come along. And our year sixes at the moment will have moved into youth, so they'll get to go to that one. So we're already making plans for when our weekend's going to be next year, so it'll probably likely to be around the same time of year, so a week or two before the Easter holidays. So just have that in your minds and if you uh, are thinking what a great opportunity to serve and what a brilliant team that is and um, we'd love to have you next year and whether you're someone who regularly serves with kids or youth um, or whether you're someone who that's new for it's a really good way to kind of have a bit of a taster of what kids work and youth work is like um, so do chat with me or any of the leadership if you'd be interested in that as well
Amazing. And we've got Ben and the band who are going to lead us in a time of sung worship. And our first song is going to involve some actions. We're going to praise through our actions and through dancing as well. So the very first, well, this is a song that most of you probably know. It's called My Lighthouse, but we haven't done it in a while. Sarah's going to talk through the actions of the, the chorus, going to show us, and then we'll do the bridge as well. And the verses, you'll just pick up as we do it. So it goes, My Light house, make a little house, my light house, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, and you follow God. My light house, my light house, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, and you do little waves to one side, and then you do a safe to shore, like that, and then you do a little clap. Clap, sure, safe to sure, like that. Um, so that's the chorus. Beautiful, I'm sure you guys very have cool got performance. That. Yeah, thank now you. Now we're going to swap, and Nate's going to show you how to do the bridge. <laughs> so in the bridge, it goes like this Fire before us, make some flames. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. I'll repeat that. Fire before us. You're the brightest. You will lead us through the storm. And there's some actions for the verses, but you can just follow us for those. If anyone wants to come and join us, kids, um, you're really welcome. Come and help. The only other thing is that in this first song, there's going to be a chance to have financial offering as well. And if you want to make giving part of your worship today, the basket's going to be passed down the rows. There'll be a QR code on the screen as well. And our Connect station is in the foyer. If you would like to do that, you're very welcome to. Please stand if you're able as we worship together. Wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you Whoa. Trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow brings, with each morning I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse. My lighthouse. My lighthouse. Shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Whoa. Oh, my lighthouse. My lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Safe to shore. Fire before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm.
trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore safe to shore Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who carries us. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to gather together and worship you, that you are our light in the darkness, that you are trustworthy, that you are faithful. And Father, I thank you for the gift of song, the gift of dance, the gift of family here in this room and those who are joining in online as well. We are gathered to worship you because you are worthy of our praise. All that we have, we choose to give back to you because you are the author, you are the creator, and we love you, God. Amen. Amen. If you want to take a seat, guys, this is the moment where we're going to um, move into different spaces. So we continue our worship as one family, but we move to different rooms around the building. So children um, are going to just move to the back. And if you're in years three and four, we're going to go over to this corner. If you're in preschool, infants five and six, over to that corner. And our, our younger youth group, Rock Solid, also go out of that door over there. So do make your way to those areas. One of the things we want to say as well as we continue through the service is if at any point you have a word or a picture or a bit from the Bible, a scripture that you think God is giving you for building up the church, for encouraging all of us, do you come to the front, just come to speak to Sarah and myself as we're sat here and just share that with us and we'll discern if that would be appropriate to share in this service so that we can continue to encourage all of us uh, with the words of God. Absolutely. Why don't you just have a chat with the person next to you? Um, maybe about your plans for Easter. Have you got any, any plans? Uh, what are you going to be doing over the next couple of weeks? Just have a chat with the person next to you as our, as our kids go out. Beautiful. If you want to curtail those conversations and stand together, and if you're able, we're going to continue in worship. I was just reminded, uh, the first line of this song says, who else would rocks cry out to worship? And as the procession uh, starts to happen, as Jesus is walking into Jerusalem, there are the Pharisees and they don't understand who he really is. And they think that people are blaspheming and all of these people are praising and shouting out to Jesus, hail the King of Kings, Hosanna in the highest. And, um, and they say to Jesus, you know, stop, stop these people doing this. And, and Jesus responds in simply saying that if they didn't, even the rocks themselves would cry out to worship. And we have an opportunity, don't we, this morning to lift up our praise, to honor the true King of Kings, for he is worthy and worthy of all our adoration and all our praise. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing. But this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor and the praise, Lord Jesus. This song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Who else would die for our redemption? Whose resurrection means our rise? Thank you, Lord. There isn't time enough to sing of all you've done. 
den But I have eternity to try With a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name You alone deserve the glory The honor and the praise Lord Jesus, this song is forever God, we have so many reasons to praise your name. Not even a thousand hallelujahs would be enough. You alone deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Thank you, Lord. See on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. So look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side. No greater sacrifice for what is done. What he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven. So I praise God for what he's done. To sing for the freedom he has won, that even death is dead and dead, for his life has overcome. Speak, say the name, speak, say the name above all names, over every broken place, he is risen 
The Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. So sing hallelujah to the King. He's worthy to receive all the worship we can. forgiven my future is heaven oh I praise God for what he's done oh I praise God for what he's done oh I praise God what he's done when no foundations have been shaken when I'm left standing in the dark And all I feel is my heart breaking You still reign and you're still God And when it feels all hope has faded the heavy questions hit so hard And though my soul may feel forsaken You still reign and you're still God Though I can't see what's before Trust your heart, and this one truth will be my story. Yes, it will. You still reign, and you're still God. I will declare, I will declare that you are with me. Thank you, Lord. Though voices whisper that you're not. You'll never leave me nor forsake me oh, Cause you still reign and you're still God Though I can't see what's before me I know that I can trust your heart And this one truth will be my story you still reign and you're still God and when my enemies surround me I'll trust the victory of your cross thank you Lord 
and fix my eyes upon you, Jesus. For you are God and I am not. You are good and you are faithful. As you have been from the start, you were king all things for your glory. Because oh, you still reign and you're still God. And though I can't see what's before me, I know that I can trust your heart. And this one truth will be my story. You still reign and you're still God. Yes, this one truth will be my story. You still reign and you're still God. Thank you, Jesus, that whatever we're walking through right now, that you are God, that you are sovereign over it all. We thank you, Jesus, that because of what you've done on the cross, that we can trust you, that you've defeated death, and that you reign forever. Thank you, God. Amen. Just want to take your seats. Um, Judy's going to come and talk to us in just a moment. We're going to hear a, a reading from the Bible just before that. Um, but I'm just going to pray for Judy now as we, um, yeah, just get ready to receive from God through her. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for Judy. Thank you for her uh, words and her wisdom um, and for who she is. And we pray for her now, Lord, that you would inspire her, that you would speak through her. And we pray for us that you'd give us hearts that are soft and ready to receive from you this morning. Amen. Early in the morning, they led Jesus from Caiaphas' house to the Roman governor's palace. They would not go inside the palace because they did not want to make themselves unclean. They wanted to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went outside to them and asked, What charges do you bring against this man? They answered, If he were not a criminal, we wouldn't have brought him to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we, do, we are not allowed to put anyone to death, the Jews answered. This happened so that what Jesus had said was about, about how he would die and would come true. Then Pilate went back inside the palace and called Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of Jews? Jesus said, is that your own question, or did others tell you that about me? Pilate answered, I am not Jewish. It was your own people and the leading priests who handed you over to me. What have you done wrong? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If it belonged to this world, my servants would fight so that I would not be given over to the Jews. But my kingdom is from the from another place. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you are the one saying I am a king. This is why I was born and came into the world to tell people the truth. And everyone who belongs to the truth listens to me. Pilate said, what is truth? After he said this, he went out to the Jews again and said 
To them, I find nothing against this man. But it is your custom that I set one prisoner to you at Passover time. Do you want me to free the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Let Barabbas go free. Barabbas was a robber. Well, good morning, everyone. Can I uh, add my welcome to Sarah and Nate on this Palm Sunday? And um, I don't know about you, but I've been missing the stories that we have been uh, having from our our congregations. And uh, we have a treat for you this morning. We have another story. Uh, We haven't forgotten them. They're all in a kind of library. And from time to time, when they're really relevant, uh, we want to share them with you. And this is a beautiful story uh, from Rick Miles this morning. And I think it really introduces this passage for us, looking at someone who witnesses injustice and then actually becomes an agent for that justice, uh, certainly in our city and beyond. So let's watch this story from Rick. Hello, I'm Rick and I've been married to Dot for 52 years and we have three children who with their spouses have given us seven wonderful grandchildren. My parents were followers of Jesus and during my early years we belonged to a Christian denomination that studied the Bible regularly, was very hospitable and crossed social boundaries. I learned a lot about God's kingdom, his justice, his forgiveness and his love. And I decided to follow Jesus who died for me and gave me hope. Sadly, during my childhood, the leaders of the church became more interested in power and control. It was said that some of them were led more by the spirit in the bottle than by God's spirit. But they imposed strict rules and created fear and division, and my family was forced out. But despite the pain of all that, we started an exciting journey of learning and spiritual growth with Christians in other churches. And I ended up eventually with Riverside. Not surprisingly, I become wary of dogmatism and imposed rules and corrupt leadership in any setting. But throughout my life, I held on to my belief in the values of God's kingdom and his love, his goodness and his justice. And that fitted well my career. I worked with the NHS and local and national government where much of my work was around good governments and integrity and accountability, both to the law and to the people that we were serving. I faced big challenges at times, as anyone who's worked in those settings will understand, and pressure to compromise and turn the blind eye. And sometimes I felt like running away. I made mistakes and experienced grace both from my colleagues and from God. And over the years, I've learned more and more about God's good values and how they apply in all sorts of situations and the practical ongoing importance of asking for his help and wisdom. And sometimes my colleagues were glad of this too and even asked me to pray in different situations. On occasions then, when I and others in what some might now call the blob challenged our political bosses, trusting God was a vital part of the way forward. Some of you have heard me say that in his mid-80s, my dad called me and asked me if we could talk about a, half, a, talk about a part of his Christian belief that he wasn't sure he'd got right. 
this openness at his age to still learn, to question, to discuss and to change was a great inspiration to me. And now here am I, a pensioner, a grandfather, a citizen, a neighbour, and like my dad, I'm still learning and finding out which bits of my experience and understanding Jesus wants to refine so that they can be useful for blessing the people I come into contact with and to point them to him. We've gotten quite a lot of his family around the, the building as well. Uh, so I just thought that was such an appropriate story for us as we look at this theme of justice. So this is the third in a series of three. We looked at betrayal, then abandonment last week, and now looking at justice as Jesus journeys towards the cross, as he keeps on meeting obstacles, as he keeps on meeting opposition and doing it with truth and with grace. And there are two main themes uh, for me, certainly, in this passage that help us as we look at justice. The first is that Jesus himself here goes through the most supreme act of injustice himself. So whenever you and I go through situations as Rick's described there, and there will be in all of our lives situations where we know it simply isn't fair. It isn't fair. We know that we can be victims of injustice. We might even collude with that injustice, but we know that that is true. And Jesus has been there. He is with us in that, and he is with us with the power of God and the Holy Spirit, turning things around in ways that we always can't see at the time. The second theme is Jesus in this encounter with Pilate is introducing a different kind of kingship again. It's almost a standoff between the kingdom the authorities that Pilate represents and the kingdom of heaven that Jesus is part of. And this scene is a sort of standoff between the two of those. And what I love about Rick's story is it shows us how God's power redeems an obvious injustice, leadership that was corrupt, that was coercive, that forced his family out of a church, that had a lack of integrity at the heart of it, it would seem. And that has been something that has driven Rick, I'm sure, all of his life, to actually stand against that kind of of corruption, that sort of coercion, and to bring about, as he said, integrity. So as we look at this trial of Jesus, it was illegal in four technical ways. It was against the law. It was an injustice, even in legal terms alone. The first reason is that no trial for life was allowed during the night. Yet Jesus was tried and condemned between one and three in the morning on Friday. The second, as we heard uh, a couple of weeks ago, was that the arrest of Jesus was the result of a bribe through Judas. The third, Jesus was asked to incriminate himself. That too was illegal. And finally, in cases of capital punishment, the Jewish law did not permit the sentence to be pronounced until the day after the accused had been convicted. So even if we look at this legally, it is a huge supreme injustice. And we don't learn much about Pilate in the Gospel of John, but we see enough, don't we, to see that he's a bit of a crowd pleaser, that he's a bit of a people pleaser, that he's certainly weak, that he's driven more by fear and a sort of distance from the Jews, thinking that actually this is on them and not on me. And as he starts to interact with Jesus, Jesus very calmly and very firmly shows the truth of the kingdom that he is part of. When Pilate begins to speak, he stops him and he says, is that your own idea, Pilate? Or did others talk to you about me? And I find that really helpful, actually, in this passage, because what Pilate is doing is he is people pleasing. Now, I have that tendency to be a people pleaser. I'm sure there are many of us here that almost want to keep things sweet. It might be a driver in our lives. But actually, it's really important that we see how Pilate colludes with a massive injustice because he is trying to please the people. 
He is weak and he's full of superstition. He's fearful. And on this Palm Sunday, when we have the crowd, as Nathaniel said earlier on, shouting Hosanna and welcoming in Jesus as king, it's so sad that that same crowd, just days later, people that were in that crowd will be shouting for Barabbas and will be shouting later, crucify him. And I felt, and I, I felt particularly to speak to young people here, but I think it's true for all of us, but it is difficult, more and more difficult to stand out from the crowd and to stand up, to not go with the flow, but to stand out for justice, to stand up for Jesus, to stand up for who he is. And we applaud you as young people in our situations across this city and beyond for standing up for what is right. You know, Rick's still doing it, as he says, as a grandfather and as a pensioner. But actually, our young people, we really want to pray for you because the crowd is fierce and it can make you feel that you want to hide. But actually, to stand up and stand out, that was what went wrong, partly for Pilate. It's really important to us here at Riverside that our relationship with Jesus is personally owned. Yes, you may or may not have been brought up in a Christian family, but actually that it's personal to you. And one of the reasons we're having baptisms next Sunday is because six people, five or six people, are actually saying, I publicly want to say I'm standing out from the crowd. I am following Jesus. I am part of his kingdom, not the kingdom that Pilate is part of, but standing out and saying, no, I am part of his kingdom here in, in Birmingham and beyond standing out and Jesus says my kingdom is not of this world if it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews but now my kingdom is from another place the meeting of the two kingdoms Pilate wonders where it's from he wonders if there's a subversion to Jesus well there is (laughs) Jesus is subversive for the kingdom of heaven the meeting of two kingdoms. And Jesus is keen to point out that his is not a geographical kingdom, but it does have a source, and that is in God. God is in control. I don't know in the Old Testament how, if you've read the book of Job, but I really struggle with that book because it seems like God is the director and he sort of sets up this situation that Job finds himself in. And he has many, many injustices that happen to him, one on top of another. And God is in control. He is the director behind the scenes. And he seems to allow what we wouldn't allow. And you just think, God, stop it. Why don't you stop it? You know, this poor man is, is afflicted in so many ways. If you want to read it, if you've got a spare uh, couple of days uh, to read the, the book of Job. But at the end of the journey, at the end of this massive struggle with injustice that Job has, in chapter 42, he says, I know now you can do all things and no purpose of yours can ever be thwarted. My ears had heard of you before, but now I have seen you. And I remember when I first discovered those words and I thought, yes, whatever trials I have been through and we have been through, there is something about this kingdom that Jesus is introducing and announcing and embodying here that actually the darkness never completely puts it out that the light shines in the darkness. And as Job says here, he has been through this trial and he'd heard about Jesus before, he'd heard about the kingdom, sorry, he'd heard about God before, but now he has seen it at work through his trial, through the injustices that he has come through. Job, we hear, dies an old man and full of years. I love that. I think that I take great comfort in that. Full of years, full of abundance. And the second half of his life is doubly fruitful in so many ways, but he's held on to his faith in God. John Mark Comer uh, actually makes a really brilliant point. He makes several uh, in his new book, but this one particularly uh, struck me. He says that have we become so used to death that we forget, sorry, that death disease and injustice that we forget that they're intruders in God's world have we become so used to death disease and injustice that we forget they are intruders in God's good world we give up and actually what Jesus teaches us to pray is your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
are we in our own way colluding with these forces of injustice, of disease, and even of death, if we don't fight for the kingdom of heaven, if we don't keep praying. My little great nephew is called Joshua, and uh, boldly at the age of five, he told me in the summertime when we were in Devon, he said, Auntie Judy, I don't let them say great aunt, that's too much for me, so they call me auntie, that's as far as it can go. And uh, he looked with his big brown eyes and he said, Auntie Judy, I pray every night the same prayer, every night. And I said, oh Josh, that's amazing, what prayer do you pray? And he said, I pray that everyone in the world will love each other. And I said, what a brilliant prayer, Josh. That is a beautiful prayer. And then he looked towards me and he whispered, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I just thought, oh gosh. And I said, well, Josh, it does. But I know what you mean. You know, he lives in a household with a a younger brother, a sister, a dog, all sorts of things going on. And... um, And actually to him, he wants that, doesn't he? So he goes to bed, he prays, he wants everyone to love each other, and yet he sees around him that everyone doesn't. He sees around him injustice, just as every single one of us does. But the trouble with that is, do we then collude with disappointment, or do we fight further, as Rick shows us, and just say, no, I'm not content? And I sat down with Josh, and I just said, every time you pray that prayer, Love starts to expand in your heart and in other people's hearts. Don't give up, Josh. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep (laughs) believing. And I hope that he still does. I must check up on that uh, next time I see him. And Pilate goes on to say to Jesus as he looks at him, mocking him slightly, I would imagine, in his tone. He says, so you're a king then. And Jesus says, you are right in saying that I am a king This is the reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. And I felt this was something that God wanted to highlight for us at this time in our city and this time in our world. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And I felt, it may have been me yesterday when I was reading it again, but I really did feel If we're on the side of the truth in our city, in our nation, in the situations of injustice that we're facing, we need to listen to the voice of Jesus. We need to draw close at this time to pray to him, to listen to the things that he's placed on all of our hearts, individually and together. Are we on the side of truth? I pray that we say amen to that, that we will not collude with the death, the evil and the disease, as John Mark Comer says, but actually we rise up and we keep praying and we keep believing that we, on the side of the truth, will see many miracles. Even just last week, we were praying for our city of Birmingham and uh, Jonathan was leading us in a a beautiful time of praying for our city uh, last evening, uh, last Sunday evening. And uh, somebody was there in the congregation, I don't know who it was, but somebody was there who'd been applying for jobs all outside of the city of Birmingham. And as a result of that prayer, felt deeply moved to actually apply for something right here in Birmingham and heard, I think, yesterday that they've got the job here in Birmingham. Somebody calls to be part of the solution, to be part of God's movement here in our city. One person but so powerful because filled with Jesus and part of his kingdom. The kingdom of God is God's new order because the new order is a threat to any established order. The arrival of the kingdom forcing its way through the old order produces a most intense reaction. It attracts and repels at the same time. These are from a a Methodist scholar uh, from Uruguay, Mortimer Arias. And uh, I think beautifully here, he sums up the fact of this standoff between the two kingdoms, the kingdom of this earth and the kingdom that Jesus is ushering in, uh, in this scene. The kingdom of God is God's new order, forcing its way, the arrival of the kingdom through the old order, producing a most intense reaction. And I think the key bit for me here is this last phrase, It attracts and repels at the same time. If we are part of the kingdom here on earth, 
we need to attract and repel. And sometimes we talk a lot here, don't we, about attracting. How do we attract people to the love of Jesus? How do we make him known? And all that is brilliant and beautiful. But actually, we're called to repel evil. We're called to repel injustice, to overcome evil with good, as we heard a few weeks ago. We're agents of this kingdom. So let's not stay we can almost get anaesthetized to evil but let's keep praying and maybe in, in the end we can pray specifically for people who feel that actually they want that rawness back where they see injustice where where we witness evil to be so repelled by it that it compels us to keep praying to keep believing and to keep acting many years ago the the city of stoke was voted the worst place to live in the whole of the uk uh, I lived in Dudley and that came close. There are a lot of times that that, that used to reach the press and people would mock us and, and we would have half nights of prayer to just say, no, this is Dudley, we believe in Dudley. But Stoke got the award uh, for being the worst place to live. And can you imagine what that does to a child or a young person or even to a, an older adult seeing those headlines? But what it did is the churches came together. They realized they were working all apart, that their lights were dimming. And they came together and they said, not on our watch. We do not want Stoke to be labeled the worst place to live in the United Kingdom. So they started to pray, to work with the police, to work with youth agencies. They had times called to prayer and invited people from the council and they found that things started to shift and change and they said in the end they realized that it was about the quality of the light coming together that started to change that place and I felt really reminded of that as we pray for Birmingham and we are going to have a half night of prayer specifically for our city in a couple of weeks time a few weeks time and we'll announce that a half night of prayer for our city specifically to say we love our city of Birmingham and we want to come together we want our lights to all come together to repel evil and to bring about justice it was about the strength of the light and ultimately, Pilate leaves the decision with the crowd, the crowd that he loves, the crowd that he follows. He even says, what is truth? Well, we certainly live in a world that says that now, that is saying, what is truth? If we're on the side of the truth, if we're listening to the truth, what is truth? We have an answer. Pilate retorts, and then he gives Jesus over to the Jews gathered there, and he says, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But it is your custom for me, in other words, it's over to you, to release to you one prisoner at Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? And it's interesting that actually they're both in some translations named Jesus. Jesus Barabbas and Jesus, son of God. And the crowd say, no, release Barabbas, release Barabbas. And he, a criminal, somebody caught up in subversion, a different kind of subversion, is released as Jesus knowingly takes this supreme injustice for you and I so that we could know forgiveness, so that we can approach this Easter time celebrating the freedom that we have because Jesus died and rose again, went through the most evil, the most horrific death so that you and I could know forgiveness, so that you and I could know life. Pilate leaves justice to other people. Is that true of us? Pilate leaves justice to other people. Let that not be said of us, that actually we don't leave justice to other people. We think about what our role might be. Thomas Kelly, a great theologian and a poet as well actually, writes this about the loving presence of the kingdom of heaven. This loving presence doesn't burden us equally with all things, but considerately puts upon each of us just a few central tasks as emphatic responsibilities. For each of us, these special undertakings are our share in the joyous burdens of love. We cannot die on every cross, nor are we expected to. If you feel overwhelmed, and I'm sure most of us do at the moment, I think there's real comfort in those words. And as someone who's been a pastor for quite a few years now, I have seen this beautifully at work in all of us. 
that when you meet with people, there's a sense of so much passion around a particular area of injustice that actually you see it light someone up and it can be quite specific to a people group, to something that is going on in our city. And actually there's something called a divine dissatisfaction that I believe he puts in every believer in him, a divine dissatisfaction, that repelling of evil. And I wondered if we could just hear, or maybe if you're at home, just think about, uh, as Sarah said earlier, and maybe call out, what are the areas of injustice in our city and in our world? Let's just call them out, that make you angry, that make you want to do something. Just call them out now. Lack of housing, thank you. Discrimination, thank you. Yeah, thank you. What's happening in Gaza, yeah, and across the world, the wars. Well, there'll be many, many more and in every heart, there is that divine dissatisfaction. I remember reading years ago, if you say small things don't make a difference, try going to bed with a mosquito. Uh, and I think sometimes that we think our part doesn't matter. And actually, our part is crucial. He's been given us a divine DNA to play our part. So let's be recommissioned as we think about the areas of influence that we get to bring about justice, truth, and his kingdom. There's a story that is very dear to my heart, and I know some of you may have heard me mention it before. I've certainly written about it. But uh, in Johannesburg, uh, many years ago, there was a woman called Joanna who was in a township listening to her little radio in her small home on her own. And she heard a statistic about Paulsmore Prison in Cape Town in South Africa. And she heard that it was now voted the most evil place in the whole of Africa. And that in Paulsmore Prison, in the last year, recorded had been 176 violent assaults, prisoner on prisoner or officer on prisoner, many of which had led to death. And something inside her, that divine dissatisfaction, that heartbreak happened to her. Now, she lived a really simple life in Johannesburg with her very small things, but she put her possessions together and she got herself to Cape Town, which is quite some considerable way across South Africa. And she insisted on meeting the governor of the prison. And she waited and waited until finally she pestered them, a bit like the, the persistent widow in the New Testament. And she got through to meet with the governor himself. And he was so desperate at this point. They'd been on Sky News as the most evil place in the whole of Africa. So what could he do? So he sees this woman and she said, I will read the Bible with any men in your prison that want to for an hour a week and see if it makes any difference. And he said, well, what harm can it do? You know, this lovely lady just reading the Bible, we'll let that happen. But actually the men loved it so much that she started to do it an hour every single day. Then she started to go in six days a week. Bible study after Bible study after Bible study with the men lapping up forgiveness, wanting to be forgiven, wanting to be agents of that forgiveness. And after a year of these Bible studies, which became multiple in the prison, I'm sure some of you know, but guess how many violent assaults and deaths there were in custody after one year? None. Now, I'm not brilliant with my maths, but that's the kingdom. You don't go from that many violent assaults and deaths to none. That's the truth. Are we on the side of that truth? Because she was a woman just there with her radio listening, but something broke in her heart that just said, no, that's not okay. I will not have that said of the nation of Africa or of that prison. And I was privileged to go to that prison to do some dramas there and actually to see the men and the Bible verses all around them that they've etched into the walls of the prison. You go in and you're fearful and they're huge men. And you go in and you just see the beauty of what they've tried to create. And I had many of them coming to speak to me about what forgiveness had meant to them. Joanna's work continues, and I met her as well. 
And I just found it such a powerful testimony to me personally that I can feel overwhelmed when evil seems to be winning, as it seems to be here. You know, people must have ended this trial, particularly the disciples, just thinking, how does evil win again? And yet Jesus goes to a death that brings you and I victory, not just for now, but forever. I wonder if you'd stand with me. And I'd love to pray for us in two areas. One is for those dissatisfactions in every heart, whether you were able to name them or not, that we know that God has distributed his passion for justice into the body here on earth. We are his body. We are his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears, his heart. And he has put those within us to bring about change in our time. There's a lovely prayer that I wanted to start with, and then I will pray for us uh, in our seasons of injustice in our lives, which may feel like they're too much for us as well, but also what's going on in our city and in our world at the moment. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Lord, today, as we look at that question, what is truth that Pilate puts to Jesus, we ask that you would recommission us to be on the side of truth to stand out from the crowd and to say we will be repelled by evil and we will overcome it with good, that we will be drawn towards integrity, to supporting leadership in our city that is good, that is wise, that is loving. Lord, we commit to praying for the different areas that you've placed passion within our hearts for. Thank you that you don't ask us to do it all, that you ask us to partner with you, Holy Spirit, that you can do miracles as you did in South Africa, as you've done in Stoke. We pray for your miraculous redemption here in our lives. And for those personally walking through trials of injustice, we pray that you would lift their heads, that you would lift their hearts, that you would fill them again with courage not to give up, like Job, so that one day they might say, I had heard rumours of you, but now I have seen you. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you went towards death that you let Barabbas be released so that you would go to your death so that we too would be released, undeserving like Barabbas, and yet set free by your death and resurrection. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Recommission us by the power of your spirit to be on the side of truth. For we ask it in your powerful, beautiful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, many of us will be at the back uh, as part of the prayer team. We'd love to pray with you, just to stand with you, uh, perhaps where your heart is breaking at the moment, whether that's for you personally or whether that's for something going on in our world or in our city. Uh, we would love to stand with you and to pray for his closeness because he does understand and he draws close to us when we are broken hearted. So let's pray together and let's praise him. Of sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed. The sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus' slain. Silent as he stood accused, beaten. My 
mocked and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, He took a crown of thorns. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor run to thee. Sent from heaven, to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my jesus spilled now the curse of sin has no hold on me whom the sun sets free oh it's free The stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be praised. He's risen from the grave. All oh, that rugged cross. My salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor run to thee. Praise and honor. continue to think about this God of justice as we continue to worship him we're just welcoming back our children into the room if you're a, a parent of anyone who is aged not to four now is the time to go and collect your children from the preschool room but we want to continue to worship we're going to have another song as we worship and think about God helping us to fix our eyes on the injustices of the world asking God to break our hearts for what breaks his to open our eyes to see what God sees. We're gonna continue in our time of worship now. I 
see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see His love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people we've just sang break my heart for what breaks yours everything I am for your kingdom's cause thank you Jesus that you um, have died for us that we know where we're going help us to see open our eyes Lord to the injustice around us give us compassion for people and we thank you God that as we leave here today and go about our days that we don't leave you behind would you go ahead of us would you stay close to us speaking to us about those things that you want us to bring your kingdom into thank you Jesus amen John you take your seats guys welcome back kids and youth um, 
just a few notices as we wrap up today. So open lunch is going to be on in this very room at one o'clock. So we've got another service in a bit, but if you'd like to come back for open lunch, you're all really welcome to come and join us for that. Also, this evening, as it's the fourth Sunday of the month, we've got our gather group, which is 18 to 30s, up into 30s and beyond, um, meeting at Sorrento Lounge just after the evening service. So the idea is that you come to the evening service, or if you've already been to a morning service, just come along uh, to Sorrento Lounge for drinks and food as well. You're welcome to have that uh, from 8 p.m. onwards tonight. We'd love to see you there. Um, families, there are a couple of events happening over the Easter holidays I wanted to let you know about. First of all, on Tuesday, um, here is going to be a React on stage day. So it's a one day holiday club for kids in years one to six. Um, so that's Tuesday, 9.30 till 4. So it's all day. And there are flyers about that around if you want to uh, have a look at that. And also this Thursday at the Hub Hazelwell, um, Riverside Performing Arts are going to be putting on a production of Rainbow Fish and the Sea Monsters Cave. So that's great for younger kids, um, kind of primary age. And that's on Thursday, the 28th at the Hub Hazelwell at 11 o'clock. So again, have a look at the flyers for that. It's a really great show about conquering your fear. And there's some really cool things they do in the show with lights and puppetry and things like that. I've really loved seeing that show. One more thing uh, with Riverside Performing Arts, which is our theater company, is that they are putting on another event called A Night at the Musicals. It's the third time that's happened. You may have been at the previous one. That's taking place in June. And the reason why we're telling you now is because if you would like to sing a musical number at A Night at the Musicals happening in June, please do. Either get in touch through email or speak directly to Lydia or Caroline. Get in touch with them and let them know that you would like to bring your best musical showstopper at that event. They would love to hear from you. What if you wanted to do that with someone else? Do you have to be on your own? Could you do no, it with No, you can say, else? oh, I'd like to sing with someone else. Is there anyone else who's kind of thinking similar things? Definitely, definitely. In the past, we've had some really incredible musical numbers and also some shocking musical numbers as well <laughs> that have been... In a good way, in a good way, in a good way, yes. It's always entertaining. <laughs> it is. Um, <laughs> lots of these bits of information are on our Easter flyer as well. Hopefully you all got one. Um, if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to take this home because it's just clutter, I understand. But how amazing would it be if everyone took these home and gave them to a neighbor or a friend and said, look, we've got Easter events coming up in our church. It has all the information about Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Please, we'd love to see you there. We'd love for you to come along. On uh, this coming Friday, it is Good Friday. We've got two services here in this room, 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. It's going to be a more reflective service. There won't be kids groups on apart from not to fours provision. Uh, and it, the whole room's going to be set up differently. It's going to be really contemplative and a chance to think about uh, what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Awesome. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So we are going to be not here, but at the Saffron Centre next Sunday. And it's going to be at a new time of 10.30 at the Saffron Centre. Um, so we're going to be celebrating Easter together. And also, even more amazingly, we're going to be celebrating baptisms, as Judy mentioned in her talk. So a few people are going to be getting baptised next Sunday. So do come along to that at Saffron Centre at 10.30. Um, and there's going to be no... Uh, sorry, there will be open lunch next Sunday here. There will be open lunch at one o'clock, but there will not be a worship and prayer gathering in the evening next Sunday. The next one of those is going to be on the 5th of May. Um, so yeah, not for a little Pop while. that in your calendar. Pop that in your calendar. Otherwise, we're coming to the end of our service now. If you'd like to get a tea or coffee and some biscuits, other drinks, we'll be through those doors at the back of the hall into the fireside room. Uh, and please do chat with people. And we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week as you think about the justice in our city. God bless you all. See you soon. Bye.